I am Liza, and what I'm up to is I've been playing with my band, the Liza Colby Sound. We've been together for almost two and a half years, and um, we're playing all the time. We have a gig tonight. We have a gig on Friday for Fortnite's holiday party, which is going to be an extravaganza. Um, and New Year's Eve, I mean, we play all the time, and what we're doing right now as a band is we are writing a bunch of new material. We are getting ready to uh, put out a live EP and um, next year to have a new record out, our sophomore record. So it's really exciting and and great. And I'm to follow up with what Gabe said, it's like I'm in a very similar situation with my band is that, uh, you know, you know everybody's tendencies and, and one of the best places that you can be when you are playing um, – in an intimate setting with musicians like that, like in a band or in a quintet, is to be with with people that you trust and you know that, like my guitar player, Adam Roth, his job is guitar. You know, Alec Morton, his job is bass. Charlie Roth, his job is drums. But that they stick to their job and they do their job really, really well. So you're not like, you know, on top of people and breathing down their neck about getting their shit together they just know what they're doing and it ends up being a unit and to have that with um those kind of uh parts it's really unbelievable so um right now i live in baltimore and i am pursuing a master's at the peabody conservatory uh which is strictly a music conservatory even though it's it's part of the johns hopkins university and I was there for four years. I also did my undergraduate degree there. And um, right now, my absolute passion is playing chamber music. And what chamber music really means is just playing together with people. So I, all forms of music are chamber music. Liza, what she does is could be chamber music. It is. Um, but I have a group that I play with. It's five guys. We're called the C Street Brass. And we perform all the time. And that's my, that's my absolute favorite thing to do. Um, so, for example, this Friday, we, we have a gig. We have another gig on Saturday. And these guys, I spend hours and hours and hours with them each week. And I play with them every day. And um, it's actually, it's weird. It's almost like having uh, like five girlfriends, except <laughs> it's like your five bros and it's <laughs> five relationships <laughs> but it's awesome and then you make music together and it what i love about chamber music is it's not that and i love orchestra and i i love listening to it and playing it but with these guys it's not i don't go in and hear a performance that i kind of know how it goes it's like i look over across the way and i see my trumpet player kyle and i know when he's going to breathe or i know how he phrases this way because i've played with him so much that even when we read something, I just know his musical instincts. And to have a group that's that uh, nimble, it feels like a sports car. We can just do anything that we want to do at any time. And it's so, the communication is so rich. Um, so right now I'm pursuing a master's, but we were just um, have a potential offer that we may be going to Pittsburgh next year to study at Carnegie Mellon as a as a resident ensemble so it's likely that my group is going to go somewhere together and that's definitely what i want to do i want to keep playing with these guys and i would love to eventually teach at the college level i do a lot of teaching now in baltimore i teach kids from elementary school all the way up to high school and um, that's another thing that for me just happens to be extremely fulfilling to be able to uh because I get to teach them more than trombone. I mean, to be able to get in there and set an example for kids to show them not only that music's cool and that you can have a great time doing it, but that that commitment and that presence can be with you in anything that you do. And I feel like it's just a wonderful way, one-on-one, -on -one, to spread the word about some positive positivity. It's really nice. Yeah. So Gabe and I grew up in a musical family. As I've said before, both of our parents are musicians and our aunt and uncle are musicians. So um, music was just constantly around us. And um, <laughs> probably just from us being around it all the time, it's really been just yeah. like follow suit. Having the atmosphere of, and it's much easier to appreciate now, I go to a conservatory and I have a lot of friends 
and my peers who grew up in families where music wasn't around and I had taken it for granted, especially when I was growing up, but to have really serious accomplished musicians in the house, which our parents are always playing, always playing. Music's right. always going on. And neither Eliza or I are doing exactly what they did, but just to have that sense of commitment, the commitment to music that both of our parents have was, I would say, really influential to me, right. definitely. And a relation, I mean, our relate, the four of us all have our individual relationships with music, but just how committed we all are in our, our personal relationships with music, our personal relationship to music. Absolutely. So I think that that's really um, special, you know, and that it's definitely a driving force for all of us um, alone and together, it's really been amazing. And one of the, actually one of the things that we talked about is like periodically, you know, just with families, you kind of fall into your natural, I'm like you have like a place in your family and you fall into that and you talk about whatever you talk about as a family. And one of the things we talk about would be how there are just some people who just do not listen to music. It's just not one of their things. And it's weird because it's so huge for us to even think that that could be like there could be somebody out there that just it's like well, music just never really did it for me I do x y and z and it's great and it really is just the like butter on my on my bread but I don't listen to music I mean everything that we've done includes music music has been involved in it yeah I'd say it just really runs through our veins almost I really feel that way from such a young age I mean when Liza and I, like five years old, younger than five, we're going out to clubs. There's like <laughs> cigar smoke and c cigarettes. Everybody's drinking. Yeah. We're just going to see our parents play, play some music up yeah, there. Yeah, totally. It's like no big deal. Right. Just go to see our parents play on the weekend. It's even would be unique in and of itself if it were just uh, a husband and wife playing music together at some local venues around the area. But then Liza and I, siblings, were there soaking it in from super young. Yeah. And, uh, was, Actually, one of my favorite smells, and it's uh, which never happens anymore. But when I was little, I don't know if Gabe remembers because he's five years younger than I am. But um, my mom would come home, and like you're a little kid, and you just want your parents to be home, and they'd be out gigging. And my mom would come in, and she would like wake me up just to kiss me, let me know she was home, and she would smell like cigarette smoke, sweat, and Somali rose, <laughs> and I loved it. It really just smelled so good. <laughs> And it it's like music. That's like, it's my favorite smell in the entire world. And I rarely smell it anymore because there's not much smoking in bars or music venues anymore. But that was just the best. And it really like kind of um, set the tone for our, our lives. This is what we do now. Absolutely. It was funny. Just uh, two weeks ago, we did what was our first professional engagement all together Correct. as a family. The NASCAR Awards. Which was in Las Vegas. And we were all staying out in a hotel and all going to work, which was rehearsal, you know, a four hour rehearsal, a dress rehearsal, and then the show. And to be able to make music with your family and it, our paths have definitely differed through the years, especially Liza and ours. Not sure if we were going to pursue music and it happened that I'm, both of us did in our different ways, but to have it be able to intersect in one way that we could all play music together with Liza and I, Liza and my mom singing on stage, my dad leading a band and I just sitting, sitting in the band. It's, it was wonderful. Yeah. Really the coolest thing ever. Super, super special. <laughs> I guess what I'll do is I've never, this has not been recorded anywhere. Um, I'm going to sing it for you guys. So I guess maybe not last summer, it was the summer before I was on my way up to a session and it was the hottest day of summer. And I decided to ride my bike from ninth and C to 110th and central park West. It was really stupid. It was really hot. And I was riding up the West side highway and, um, I don't know. It's like, I guess a bunch of songs come to me when I'm writing them and, a car drove by with Florida license plate and I started singing this hook and then it turned into um, this little song and I will sing it for you. F-L-O-R-I-D-A is where he said he's gonna be. I, I didn't wanna hear what he'd say so I, I just let him leave. 
F L O R I D A. It's filled with beaches and palm trees. F L O R I D A. Why did you take and make him leave? Whoa, F L O R I D A is where he said it's gonna be. I didn't want to hear what he'd say, so I, I just let him leave. F-L-O-R-I-D-A, it's filled with beaches and palm trees. F-L-O-R-I-D-A, why did you take him, make him leave, make him leave? I'm gonna do uh, a Blue tune bells. that I actually did in high school. It was I did it back then. It's a it's a show piece, and um, yeah, it's just a piece that's been with me for a long time. It was something that I put on the. I was given this CD, I think, by my band director, and I put the CD on. It was called the Virtuoso Trombone. Like whatever, I don't know. I I like play. I maybe pick up the trombone once a week outside of school. And I listened to this and it just blew my mind. I could not believe that this was a trombone player. And I immediately wanted to do it. And um, so I did. I learned the piece and then eventually I performed it with my school and uh, for a concerto competition. So this is Blue Bells of Scotland by Arthur Pryor. like doing her thing, you know, in the 60s and 70s and and 80s for that matter, just touring a lot and singing all the time. My parents met because my dad tried out for my mom's band and did not make it and uh, for our mom's band and didn't make it. And then, um, she, you know, like she was doing it and uh, then the two of them ended up linking up and getting together and making music. And I mean, my mom is like, you watch her, when you watch her sing, it's it's unbelievable. It's like she is owning this room and takes it completely. And my dad's one of these people and, and just extremely talented. And then you have all these like different um, 
I'm trying to think of the word, but it's like my dad, his motivation and just sheer tenacity when it came to the business was like unbelievable. Well, it's like he definitely is talented, you know, but it was just unbelievable just watching this motivation and just sticking to his guns and, you know, making our just everything come full circle so he could support our family. And that support in itself is unbelievable. I mean, the greatest thing about our family is just that our baseline is this like unbelievable foundation of communication and support for each other. That's like, I mean, nothing in any field is particularly easy or is an easier route. But what makes it way more doable is when you have a family that's like, I support you and I'm here for you. For me, um, the biggest thing, music wasn't my, I mean, I've, I have always absolutely had the greatest passion for music, especially the music that my parents have played, which is rhythm and blues and jazz, which just huge influences. And then I happened upon classical music, and I'm so happy that that happened for me. But uh, always seeing the, it's, it's such a long road. There are so many ups and downs. You're just never going to be really happy to do exactly. I mean, overall, you are. You're, you're happy doing what you're doing. But there are rough times, and you work through it. And it's not personal. But that's the path. And I would see my dad, or he would have a rough gig, and be like, come back. Hey, Dad, how was your gig? And he'd be like, it's not that drummer was shitty. <laughs> <He's> the drummer, <laughs> drummer was bad. It's like, wasn't that fun? I felt like I haven't been practicing that much, so I got I to gotta start practicing then the next week, you're like, how was your gig? Great gig. Great musicians. Had such a good time. It was a lot of fun. And you, you, it was easy to see that it's, a, it's, it's not a straight line. And for the stuff that I did, whether it was music or anything else, I, I learned that it was, especially when I didn't get into something that I worked hard at um, or any, any disappointments are just really opportunities to grow and discover more things about yourself. And I think music just as, as far as growing personally, I mean, as a vehicle to understand yourself better, it's unbelievable. I don't know if there's really anything else better. I've learned so much. So that idea that it's really not, it's just, you have so many opportunities to just get, be more conscious about what's going on, helping other people, helping yourself staying positive. I, I think unlike any other art, because all we have is time. It's totally relative. Music doesn't exist. At the same time, music's going everywhere right now. It's going on. You can just jump in and make some music and you can not be with the other people or be with them. But all we have in music is what has just happened. And that's you're relating that to what's happening now. It's It's really a gateway into the present you you must be present and performancing perf performing is uh it's a completely conscious present activity the only way to get an audience on your side is if you're there they're along they can't sit and watch your craft or they you know you don't a movie takes time but it's still you still pick it up and put it down and when you perform it's going to be different it's going to be an un unique experience, and to have that, uh, uh, Igor Stravinsky actually said that it was music is like man's gateway into the present, and I agree with that. And and I guess to end it was that even though we both resolved at a certain point in our life to go, this is what we're going to do. It was so prominent and so influential from the time that we were little that it's just like it was really hard to not I mean it would have almost at this point looking back it's like it would have been harder to not do music than to do <laughs> music because we just know I mean in our in our given situation we know music mm -hmm. 